Welcome everybody, I am Marina Chiara Garassino, I am a professor of medicine at the University of Chicago and I am the director of the thoracic oncology. Here with me is Professor Girard, he is a, a very well-known uh, professor of uh, oncology and we collaborated in the past for thymic malignancies and this is why he is here with me today. Do you want to do an introduction or not? Sure, so um, I'm very obviously uh, happy to, to be here. Uh, we took the opportunity of the uh, ASCO meeting uh, uh, to, to discuss together about uh, thymic malignancies. These are rare uh, tumors, uh, obviously complex management because of the rarity of the disease and the need for uh, multidisciplinary teams dedicated to uh, uh, treating the, the patients. Yes, and you are also the president of ITMIC, which is the International Association of uh, uh, Thymic Malignancies. Can you say something about uh, your association? Sure, so ITMIC uh, is the International Thymic Malignancy Interest Group. This is an international society uh, created in, in 2010 with patients and physicians uh, dedicated to the management of, of, of this disease. Um, ITMIG is a common platform uh, to discuss uh, projects. Uh, we were able to participate uh, to the staging uh, revision of, of, of thymic tumors, to discuss the histopathological classifications of, of the disease. We set up uh, some consensual definitions to, to report on these tumors. So a lot uh, has been achieved uh, so far. We have multiple committees discussing all the aspects of the management of the disease. That includes uh, uh, the neurological aspects, uh, uh, the pathology, uh, radiological uh, aspects uh, 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 of, this, uh, uh, of this disease. The thymic malignancies are heterogeneous tumors, so there is a lot of complexity in, uh, in the diagnosis and in defining the accurate strategy uh, uh, for, for treating the patients. We also have a database, uh, which is an international prospective uh, database, uh, which is a very important uh, resource to further explore uh, uh, how the patients are, are, are treated and what are the outcomes. And uh, this is why here at the University of Chicago we are starting now a big multidisciplinary tumor board in the multidisciplinary tumor board, we have the surgeons, we have dedicated pathologists, and we have also the neurologists. And this is why we know very well that it's very difficult to treat these tumors, and you, you need to stay in places where there is enough competence and there, are, there is also the multidisciplinary tumor board. Can, you, can we just go through the different aspects. Uh, why is it so important uh, to make the correct diagnosis uh, of the thymic malignancies? Uh? Well, the, the diagnosis of, of thymic malignancies is, is complex because of the multiple entities. Uh, uh, within thymic malignancies, you may have thymomas, thymic carcinomas, uh, there are five clusters of, of, of thymomas. So this is a matter of histopathological diagnosis. Uh, meaning uh, uh, looking at the microscope, the, the biopsy from, from the tumor. And here we, we showed in, in, within the French network that in about 30% of, of cases, there was a discrepancy between the initial pathological diagnosis and the uh, final diagnosis made after uh, a revision with uh, pathologists who are experts of, of this disease. So, it's very important to make an accurate diagnosis, and we know that, similar to what we have in other rare cancers, such as sarcomas, uh, uh, histopathological review is a major step in making an accurate diagnosis for the patients. Yeah, we published exactly in Italy also the same data, and there is a 40% of discordance between the diagnosis made in an ex a center of excellence and diagnosis made uh, in uh, uh, centers where they see less uh, uh, thymic malignancies. 
And this is important because we know very well that the thymomas, for example, they have a different prognosis from the thymic carcinoma. And within the thymomas, we have a multiple differences again, and they have a potentially also a different sensitivity to the chemotherapy and also uh, to the surgery. So I, I think that this is a major uh, problem. And I would suggest to all the patients uh, who were diagnosed in centers where there is not this expertise to ask for a second look and a second opinion, at least for the pathology. Moving to another important aspect of um, this kind of tumors. So I believe that the importance of the surgery is crucial for the control of the disease. We saw that there are incredible differences in centers who treat patients, uh, co who treat commonly patients uh, with rare tumors uh, and uh, who uh, uh, are not so used to treat this kind of tumors. Can you comment something uh, on that? Yes, uh, uh, surgery is a mainstay of the treatment of, of patients with thymic tumors and achieving a complete resection of the tumor is the most important factor that drives the outcomes. And uh, whatever is the stage, whatever is the type of, of, of tumor, the, the main uh, objective is to obtain in resectable uh, uh, tumors a complete resection. And uh, there are multiple ways to, to do surgery. I, in some small tumors, it will be possible to uh, do robotic or minimally invasive. But in larger tumors, there will be a need for a, 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 a more important uh, uh, approach uh, to the tumor. But at the, at the end, what is important is to get a complete resection. And there is a need to have a, a good planification of the surgical uh, of the surgery in those patients. And it is then very important to have a good radiological assessment of, of, of these tumors. And this may include CT scans, MRI, before uh, uh, surgery is planned. Oh, yeah, this is really uh, important. And uh, um, I think that the majority of patients diagnosed, they are in very early stages. So sometimes uh, the resection for these patients is enough. But when uh, the patients, they have uh, a non-radical surgery, there are also other treatments uh, that we can uh, uh, ask uh, or we can propose to the patients. It's very important to uh, consider systemic treatments that may include uh, uh, chemotherapy as well as targeted agents for the management of, of, of patients with advanced disease or in the setting of, of recurrences. And here you have uh, some complexity again because of uh, the limited uh, number of studies available in the literature, uh, because of the molecular complexity of, uh, of thymomas and thymic carcinomas. I personally recommend to do comprehensive genomic profiling in the setting of recurrent tumors, because in, in some patients, we may identify some alterations that will drive uh, the use of targeted agents. Yes, and another question is uh, sometimes uh, these patients, uh, they have uh, autoimmune diseases that are often not recognized and they are important. The most important is clearly the myasthenia gravis, but there are uh, many of them. So can you say something both on the myasthenia gravis and also of the other uh, autoimmune disorders? For sure. So myasthenia gravis is associated with thymomas in, in about 30% of, of patients. And uh, sometimes you have clinical signs, so it's easy to diagnose. But sometimes it's uh, only uh, a, a biological uh, uh, disease uh, without symptoms. And it's then very important to recognize uh, uh, these infraclinic myasthenias because at the time of surgery, the patient may develop symptoms. So it's very important to uh, be prepared to that and to have a systematic assessment for myasthenia as well as other uh, autoimmune disorders. 
in the setting of advanced disease, some patients may be considered for immunotherapy, immune checkpoint inhibitors. This is now part of clinical trials, but there are also uh, uh, some recommendations in refractory tumors to use uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors, especially for thymic carcinomas. And again, here it's very important to have uh, an accurate assessment for autoimmune disorders and a close monitoring of the patients. Yeah, this is why here at the University of Chicago, we created an important collaboration also with Dr. Sullivan and uh, with the neurology team, because this patient must be accurately followed also with the neurological part and also for the immunological part. So uh, what uh, do you think? That, so I, you know that very well that for rare disease, uh, to have uh, a new drugs is very difficult. Do you see something that is coming uh, in the space of the thymomas uh, uh, and uh, that can be important, and also thymic carcinomas uh, that is uh, promising for the future? Well, uh, we, we see uh, many uh, phase two uh, studies with new agents. Uh, I believe that we need to have uh, uh, some, some strong rationale before moving to uh, to clinical trials with targeted agents. And so this is why we, we need to, to have uh, uh, more patients who, who benefit from comprehensive genomic uh, uh, profiling in the setting of uh, advanced disease. There are some clinical trials ongoing in, in thymic uh, malignancies, some with new agents, some with combination of immune checkpoint inhibitors with chemotherapy. Uh, we have also one randomized clinical trial that is ongoing, at least in France, but hopefully uh, in the future in uh, other countries, which is radiorhythmic, uh, 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 a clinical trial that is assessing the value of post-operative radiotherapy after complete resection of uh, thymoma. This is a, a major question in the field. Uh, after surgery uh, uh, for, for, for thymic uh, tumors, it has been historically uh, uh, standard to deliver radi radiotherapy, but at the end, we need to actually assess with the modern techniques of radiation delivery uh, the real value of uh, this uh, strategy. Yeah, this is a very important topic because uh, the major luckily the majority of these patients, they will survive after the surgery. And so you give some radiation to patients uh, who will survive for a long time and potentially they can develop also some problems uh, after some years from the radiation. So congratulations on this aspect. So all the patients coming to our clinic are asking about the role of the immunotherapy. Clearly, they saw the immunotherapy everywhere in other tumors. And so when we start with the chemotherapy, sometimes they are disappointed because they want to, to have the immunotherapy. What is the exact role of the immunotherapy in 2022? Well, uh, there are still uh, some clinical trials ongoing in thymoma type B3 and thymic carcinomas. The EORTC uh, Nivo Time study uh, with nivolumab plus uh, ipilimumab. We saw uh, during this ASCO meeting a trial in progress with uh, a bispecific antibody targeting PD-1 and CTLA-4. So trials are ongoing. This is uh, the, the first point. The other point is that we have some evidence of efficacy of uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors, especially uh, pembrolizumab, uh, for patients with advanced refractory thymic carcinoma. So, and, and, and immunotherapy with pembrolizumab has been part of, of, of the NCCN recommendation uh, in this setting. I am very cautious with the use of uh, immunotherapy in patients with thymic malignancies overall. Thymomas are a contraindication for the use of immunotherapy because of the high risk of severe immune-related adverse events. It has been published uh, multiple times in, in the literature. But for patients with thymic carcinomas, we probably here have an opportunity of treating the patients with immune checkpoint inhibitors. This requires uh, a, a close monitoring uh, for uh, uh, the occurrence of uh, immune-related adverse events because these patients may develop uh, myocarditis, myositis, which can be anticipated with this close clinical and uh, biological monitoring. Okay, 
So trying uh, to wrap up uh, what we said uh, and tell me if I'm doing correctly. So I suggest uh, for all the patients in the world to remain in uh, centers where there is a multidisciplinary tumor board uh, on board for the thymic malignancies. Here at the University of Chicago, I am the medical oncologist for this part. We have Jessica Donington for the thoracic part, and we have a big department of pathology expert in this field. And on top of that, we have also uh, the neurologists and also the immunologists. What it is really important is to understand if the patient is resectable or not. And if the patient is resectable, the surgery is always uh, the best thing to do. Again, in centers where there are high volume of thymic malignancies. For the postoperative part, uh, it is uh, very uh, debatable what to do. As you said, also the re radiation therapy is now a very crucial point of discussion with the multidisciplinary tumor board and the use of the adjuvant chemotherapy and the radiation are based on the presence of the residual tumor and also on the subtype and also on the fact that if that this is a thymoma or if this is a thymic carcinoma. And for more advanced uh, situations, we have the possibility to start uh, with the chemotherapy. And after the chemotherapy, we can continuously evaluate, uh, again, the surgery during uh, the time uh, of, uh, of, of the treatment. What it is really important in 2022 is uh, to join the patient advocacies and for us as doctors to join uh, the international associations because this is the way how we communicate the science, how we can share ideas, how we can create protocols for the patients. And so this is why here uh, you are the president of ITMIC and we wanted to have you in this discussion uh, uh, today. Yes, uh, I, I believe it's very important to discuss all the, the, the patients at the multidisciplinary tumor board. There are also tumor boards that are organized uh, within ITMI for complex cases. So very important to have this networking uh, of specialists uh, of thymic malignancies because uh, in, in some complex uh, situation, it's very important to discuss uh, between colleagues having several surgeons, several medical oncologists, several radiation oncologists and pathologists discussing together uh, 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 the, the cases. So ITMIG is a common platform. Patients are involved uh, within ITMIG. There are multiple resources on uh, our website. So please visit uh, itmig.org. We have an annual meeting uh, again uh, making physicians and patients joining together and discussing uh, uh, the scientific news and the actual management uh, of this disease. Yeah, and uh, finally also the role of the research. This is a rare tumor, so we have to join forces all together to collect all together data. So if the patients are asked to sign the informed consent, uh, for their data, this is really important uh, for them and this is uh, very important for all the patients uh, in the future. So thank you really for joining uh, this discussion. I hope that uh, this will be important for our patients uh, and uh, uh, happy to answer all the questions. Thank you. Thank you.